continue. So, we have now seen the Poisson equation, we have now our grid points. Now we do the discretization. So, the Poisson equation 1 is discretized. by the second order finite difference method that we already discussed in the beginning, phi 1. And um, also, we use that also, you can also look uh, as we did the uxx in the heat equation, that was in 6, 2. If we are to discretize the second derivative of u plus the second derivative of u at three point x i y j, we get the following: second derivative first in x is as we have already seen for the um, heat equation. U uh, now the index, the first index that goes here is the i index, and the j index stays just as it is. So we are then taking this. This and this, these points are then taken into account. So minus 2 uij plus ui minus 1j divided by delta x squared. So that is as we had discussed before. Now it is just that we let the index i take that as the first index. For the second derivative of u with respect to y, we do the similar thing. Then we go along the j line, we take the j plus 1, j, and j minus 1 into account. The i index is unchanged, so it is i j plus 1 minus 2 u i j plus u i j minus 1, now divided by delta y squared. And on the right hand side, we have our function f evaluated at the grid point where we are which is x, i, y, j. So this we can now do, and therefore we did this numbering for all grid points with the indices i from 1 to n i and uh, j from 1 to n j. So now we are then focusing on that just on the analog. And the uij is approximating the exact solution at the grid point. So in here, the uij is the approximation of the exact solution at the grid point x i y j. We have already said it's second order, but we can also prove that, as we discussed before for other equations by evaluating the truncation error. So you can do that yourself as an exercise to show that the truncation error of this approximation that we have here is of order delta x squared and delta y squared. So that means we have a second order method. And that implies that we should expect that when we refine the grid, that is when we uh, take delta x half and delta y half, the error should go down quadratically. That is, one half to the power two is one fourth. So the error with a refined grid, half grid size in both direction, should be one quarter of the original. So the Dirichlet boundary conditions that we discussed, they enter as following. Quoting A. Then at the left boundary, the I is zero. And we would then take there the <coughs> boundary condition at Yj. So that is j indicates we are at the grid point j. So then we are at some point 
you have this situation, we would be, say this would be then the index i would be zero, and we would then be here at some index. In this example, would be one, two, three, j would be three here. Yeah? Then we would have the value of the unknown given as boundary condition, g a of y j. And likewise, on the right hand side, then we will be at the grid point n i plus one j. There we will have the boundary condition g b of y j. That is then true for all grid points for us that are interesting is from one to n j. For the corner points we have to decide, but they are not interesting in the sense when we compute the values in the interior, the boundary con uh, values will not enter. For example, if we <coughs> consider in this point here, only the right and left neighbor, upper lower neighbor will enter, but the grid point will not enter. So, regarding the other directly boundary conditions, we can get them also then to uh, the equations in this form, then we would have u i zero, is that is then at the lower boundary, then we would have GC of XI. And at the top, we would have U of I, that would be NJ plus one. And there we would then have the GD of XI. And the I would be from one to N. So then, so then we have now discussed what the, the boundary conditions are for here, 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 and there. So then we have then again to focus on the governing equation, the discrete equation, that is this one. And that we can also write in a little different form so that we see more the dependence on uh, the values involved. And um, to do that, we write this equation now in the following form. So that is 12. The discrete equation can be written as 15. So we want to start by the by this guy here. Minus one over delta y squared u i j minus one. So then we have this, then we want to take this one. So we take from the indices with the from the lowest indices we go up. That will be one minus delta x squared times u i minus 1 j. And then we will get for the center grid point, and by the way, um, we do it now in such a way that we get the center coefficient positive. So we take essentially everything on the right hand side. Then this gets uh, on the left with a minus sign. The reason is we want to have these guys here then it's nicer than the matrix gets actually positive definite. We'll see that later. Uh, we want it to have in this form. And when we do that, we see we get a contribution then from the x derivative and from the y derivative. That is then 2 divided by delta x squared and 2 divided by delta y squared. And that is then u i j. And then we take the next one, we take this one here as the next, and that is then 1 over delta x squared <coughs> times u i plus 1 j, and then we have the 1 minus delta y squared, and that is the last one, is this one, u i j plus 1. And this all is equal to, we can leave a little space here below, 
is equal to minus f of x i y j. Of course, we uh, put everything on the other side. And now we identify these coefficients here. And we leave the minus in front. And we shall call this, now for that, I need also to draw a little picture. So first we have this equivalence. So it's just another way of writing the distribution. Now we want to write the stencil to see uh, the connection of these. The stencil, that is when we are involved in discretization of the equation at the grid point xij, that will be the following. So we have then here, we have our grid point ij, we have the right neighbor i plus 1, j, and the left neighbor i minus 1, j. We have, um, we could also uh, call that the eastern and that the western neighbor and we shall use both notations so then we will call this let's see, we'll call this the western node the eastern node and the center node has usually the coefficient p for the point in the middle and then we have also the point involved um, which is the northern one, that is the ij plus 1, then we have a point involved that is the ij minus 1. So this is the northern one, and this is the southern one. So then we have p, e, center point p, east, west, north, south. So this is then our five-point stencil that we have for our discretization. And that gives now the name to these coefficients, and I'm using now uh, the notation that I think was introduced by Patanka, and that is the following. So this re is related then to the southern one, so we call this the coefficient a s. This coefficient is related to the western coefficient, it is a west, so these are capital letters. This is the center point, which we call AP. This one is the eastern one, that is the AE. This one is the northern one, that is the A north. And they have all a minus sign in front. Of course, um, when we write it in another way, which we shall see uh, next week, then we, it is advantageous to have it in this form. So anyway, this is a way to express our discrete equation. And what we can note in this is that in this definition of the coefficients, we have the following, that the center coefficient, AP, that is equal to 2 over delta x squared plus 2 over delta y squared, and that is actually the sum of the neighboring coefficients. So that is actually then the A uh, W plus the A East plus the A North plus the A South. And that we can usually write as the sum over the neighbors A and B. So N B is then the west, east, south, and north that, that are the neighbors. And B for the neighbors. So that means the center coefficient is equal to the sum of the uh, neighbor coefficients, where we have it introduced in this way. So now we have um, to see what do we have here. We have this type of equation for 
all the coefficients that we don't know. These are all the coefficients in the interior, and they are the coefficients then from i from 1 to ni, and from j equals 1 to nj. All these coefficients have such equations. So that means we have here a system of equations. Now we have to decide on the ordering. There we have some freedom in how we do the ordering, which, uh, in which way. And the way that is most common is that we go along the I lines. So that we start here at 2, 2. Let's see, now our, our notation would be 1, 1. So 1, 1, it would be 2, 1, 3, 1, and so on. That would be the NI1. And then we go to the next line and take that. And then we go to the next line and so on. So we have to start <coughs> decide on some order. Use ordering in that case from left to right. This I is then increasing and from top or from it would be then from south to, to north. And so from left to right and well here we have okay say from, from the bottom to top if we have it in this way. That is that is J. So that is then the ordering that we choose. So and uh, as indicated when we have then the line let's see if we have our, our problem, I sketch it again. So we will then have the ordering that we start here. That will be the one. <coughs> and then we will go to this point here. That will be the point NI1. And then we we go up here, and then we continue here with the point that will be the 1, 2. So that will be the 1, 2. And then we go on this line to Ni2. And then we go up again here, continue with the 1, 3. And go along that line, and we'll end up here that in our notation that will be the Ni nj, the last one. So that will be our order. And then we try to get this equation, then write that as a linear system. So let's see. It's nice to have this here. following, and we shall see, block, block, tridiagonal, block, tridiagonal, uh, linear system of equations. So that is... 
is the following. For that number 16. So here we need some space. And um, so we will now get block matrices that are associated associated to the solution of the system, say, on the first line. And there we will have then what I call D1. That is a, a block matrix and the matrix A1. So now I take this away. Space. And these um, block matrices will operate on the unknowns. In that case, the D1 will operate on the unknowns in the first, on the first line <coughs> that we consider. And that will be the unknown vector U1. It has the indices U, uh, I, 1. And I is from 1 to Ni. And I'll give that in a minute. The A2 will operate, will be multiplied then by the U2. And the rest will be simply 0. And then, on the right-hand side, we will then have some right-hand side vector that I denote by C1, if we go to the second line, that would be the, the, the J equal 2, then we go along this line here. Again, J is varying, and now we have also, why didn't we have a matrix here? Because we need some information from the boundary conditions, but we shall put that in the right hand side, as you shall see. But here, when we are at the line 2, we have this available. We have access to these. It's, the values are inside in our system. And we call that matrix then B2, that is in multiplying the values in the first row. So if you imagine you are at some point here. Oh, we have discussed, we have discussed the IJ. We need access to that. We have that. So that is then taking care of the B1, U1. In the diagonal, we'll have a B2, and then we'll have an A2 here. So and the A2 is then referring to what is happening on at uh, uh, the northern neighbor. And the center, the D2, will refer to what is happening at the point itself and its left and right neighbors. And uh, the right hand side will be then some vector C2. And this pattern continues all the way down and we will get at the next but last entry we will get the A N J minus 1. So the block size is nj. So the one that we get here, that will be then the dnj. In this here, we will have then the d, the, the dnj should be the same height as nj minus 1. And this will be the bnj minus 1. The one that we have here, it will be the B and J. So that means we have the B's all the way down and the D's and the A's. And the rest is simply <coughs> here we have the U is continuing and here we have then the U and J minus 1 and here the U and J. And the right hand side will continue here we have then the C and J minus 1 and the C and J. So that is the, the basic structure. Now we want to see what are these blocks. Let's try to imagine. Let's so 
will be on our looking then for some center block, which we say some uh, dj, here would have an aj, here would have a, a bj, would have here a uj, we would have a cj. So we are looking at the center. So then we can look from, from here. So now the next neighbors will be involved. But the next neighbors will be aw. Remember, our ordering was that we let I go. So this will come first, then we will have the center one, and then we will have the AE. So these, I minus one, I, and I plus one, they will be involved. And when we start, we don't have the, uh, the neighbor, the AW, because that will enter as the boundary condition. Then we will have the minus AD that is associated with this one here. And uh, if we go to the next, the second line, we'll have the minus AW. That is now this one. So now we have it. The center point and the eastern point. So and this will be, again, this will be a tridiagonal matrix. So that will continue all the way to... Uh, down, we will get them. You will get the AE, the minus AE. We get the AP and the minus AW, and that is the next but last uh, line. And the last one will be then the AP and the minus AW. The rest will simply be zero, and they will be multiplying the uj, which will be then the ui minus 1, ui, and the ui plus 1. What is the size of this matrix? This is a, a ni times ni tridiagonal matrix. only entries in the diagonal given by the center coefficient and we have neighbors and in, in our case they are actually the same because one over the x squared and one over the x squared we have them both the a uh, w and the a so that is this and uh, well we continue the let's see if I manage that with the space I think we need anyway a little bit more space, so we have to erase that. Sorry for that. No, I think we have to take away. that are the upper uh, block matrices. So they will be involved now to the further away coefficients. And the way <coughs> coefficients that are further away, according to our ordering, that will be, in our case, the coefficient A0. Of course, we go first along I line, and then we have to get to the next one, and there we have then uh, at J plus 1, we get this coefficient. So then, it will be associated to that, and we will have just the minus a n in the diagonal. So it will be a diagonal matrix, simple a n, and the rest is zero. So that means we have then here an n i by n i diagonal matrix. And similarly, <coughs> the matrix on the lower the diagonal, the B's, it's very similar, the BJ, there we will have the A south uh, in the diagonal. So minus AS all the way down, minus AS, and the rest is zero. So that is again the NI by NI diagonal. In fact, in our case, they are the same for our case. 
case, but we do it general. So, so then we have these, the matrix, and now our unknowns. So the unknowns, 17D, are then the ones in the line J. And that is then the unknowns are then U1J, U2J, and so on, U N I minus one J U N I J. So everything that we have on in the line J, these are involved. So that was what we were discussing. When we had the D1, then that is then multiplying this. Then we have a triadical matrix involving just uh, the uh, values that we have in the line. And for D1, it is then the U11 and so on, just the first ones. And this, these capital U's, they will make up the solution vector. So each of them, let us note that, is an uh, NI vector. So this is an NI vector. And, and that is the ni vector of unknowns. So that is then, uh, that is easy. Now the right hand side. The right hand side is then given by the minus f if we are away from the boundaries. So that is the prerequisite that we are, if we are away from the boundaries. Let's see. come to the right hand side, 17E, that is the CJ. Now we assume that we are not at the lower boundary and not at the upper boundary. So that means we are not in this region here and we are not here. So we are somewhere in between here. So then we want to see what is then the, the C. First is to note we have here the minus f of x1 and then we are in the in the line j, so it will be yj. But at x1 we are close to the left boundary. So then we can take into account the western neighbor, the a west. And we so it will be so will be this one here. So if imagine we are at i equal to 1, then this will be 0. This will be then the boundary condition. So we take that on the right hand side. So it gets with the plus on the right hand side and it has then the coefficient aw. So therefore we get here the aw and that will be the left boundary and then it will be at yj. So that will be then entering there. For the second uh, point, we are in the interior, we don't need any special thing, we just take the right hand side, f of x2, yj. And then we continue to the next but last, to the x, n, j, minus 1, yj. Then we have still a right neighbor, but at nj we don't have. At nj we have the situation that we are here. So i is equal to nj, uh, sorry, uh, to n, it's not nj, it's ni. It's wrong here. Correct that. It is ni. It is ni. We are now going on the i line. Uh, so it's ni. 
So when we are at Ni, Ni plus 1 is the right boundary. So that's the eastern boundary. So then we take this to the right hand side and it gets with a plus. So then we get there with a plus and we have then minus f of x n i y j plus and now it is the a east and it is then the right boundary g b of y j so that is again a um, uh, n i vector so and uh, let's see and we have here to make a, uh, the prerequisites. We have a, to add that this is only due, uh, correct for j2 to n j minus 1. Because at 1, we are near the lower boundary. We have to take into account the southern boundary conditions. And at nj, we have to take the northern boundary conditions into account. So now I think we can take that away here, keep that in mind. So therefore we have to give the special cases for the C1, where also the, now the southern boundary conditions will enter. The structure will be very similar to what we have there. Minus f of x1, y, uh, now we are at 1. The j is equal to 1. So therefore we have the y1 here. And now we'll directly take the southern boundary conditions into account. That is, when i and j is equal to 1, then we will have here the i0. That is the southern boundary condition. So we take that on the right hand side, we get a plus, we get the AS. Southern boundary condition is the GC of X1. And now at 1, we have also the left boundary condition, like we had there. That is the AW, the GA of Y1. The second is F of X2, Y1. There we have still the, uh, the, the southern contribution from GC of uh, X2. But we don't have the, the contribution from the left boundary because we are already in the interior regarding to left and right. So then this pattern here will continue to the next but last. We'll have here the X N I minus 1 Y1 plus <coughs> A S G C of X N I minus 1. So then we are still in the interior regarding the I line, but still close to the lower boundaries. And then the last point will have the right hand side X of N I Y1. Again, the A S, now the G C of X N I. And now we will have the contribution again from the, from the right hand side, which will be then the AE, the GB of Y1. So then, and similarly then for the, for the C and J. So the that would be then the C and J then would be the following we would start with a minus F of X1 Y and J J is N J that is then governed there and now the northern boundary condition will be taken into account and that is then this one here so we have now the N J plus 1 here that will come with plus on the right hand side so we will have the plus a n. The northern boundary is the g d. That will be of x one, and then we still have the left boundary, the a w, and the g a. But now we are already at y n j. 
second is the f of x2, y, and j. Plus, we have still the northern boundary, g, d of x2. But we are now already in the interior regarding the i line, no contribution there. This pattern continues to the next but last to the x and i minus 1, y, and j. And we have the contribution still from the north boundary that will be then the x n uh, i minus 1. And in the last one we have then x n i y n j contribution from the northern boundary g d of x n i and now we have gained the contribution from the eastern boundary like we have there but now we are at uh, g b of y n uh, not y but yeah, y is right y n j so this is again a um, n uh, let's see if you can see it it is an n i vector all these the c1 the c and j and also the the c j they are all n y n i vectors and then we have our system and uh, the system that we get in the end is a block pentadiagonal matrix let's see if we can quickly show that and give you the uh, details tomorrow we are now essentially described the linear system that we have to show Oh, sorry, that was the wrong way. Okay. So the basic structure is a block triangle structure that we have now described. But when we bring it down to the level of the equations and we write it down, we'll see it has the structure of a pentadiagonal matrix. And it is the structure will be like this. So this is for a relatively small grid. And uh, then you'll see we have the, these are given by the, the um, center coefficient that we had. Let's see, we call it D. So that is giving us the triangle matrix. And everywhere where you have a zero, there is some boundary condition entry which we have then uh, taken to the right hand side. And these guys here, they are coming from the A north, and this is coming from the A south, or the minus A north and the minus A south. So that is then the structure that we have. That is called a pentadiagonal matrix. Penta, the Greek name for five. So then we'll look at that tomorrow, and uh, we continue then on this. And we shall then also look how to solve a triangle matrix. The solution of that, you can do Gauss elimination, but we shall see next week that we can also use iterative methods. Okay, so more tomorrow.